Why does the third of the three brothers, who shares his food with the old woman in the woods, go on to become king of the country? Why does James Bond manage to disarm the nuclear bomb a few seconds before it goes off rather than, as it were, a few seconds afterwards because a universe where that did not happen would be a dark and hostile place. Let there be goblin hordes. Let there be terrible environmental threats. Let there be giant mutated slugs if you really must. But let there also be hope. It may be a grim, thin hope. An Arthurian sword at sunset. But let us know that we do not live in vain. Sir Terry Pratchett. Let there be dragons. A slip of the keyboard. People always say they want things dark. But if you don't have a plan to draw people out of that and show how these people overcome it, then you just leave your audience in despair. Dave Filoni. Noblebright is an adjective derived from the term often used to describe Warhammer 40k. Grimdark. Just as every hero has a mirror opposite version that is evil, it's supposed that there must be a mirror opposite version of the heroes of WH40K where everything goes right. It can also be used to describe artwork that has a noble bright feel, even if the setting itself would not normally be considered noble or bright. Where the grimdark tag usually describes a setting in a slow, painful decline. The Noblebright tag usually describes a setting emerging from a dark age and either returning to or in the midst of a golden age. Example, Warhammer vs. Brythema. We do not need a war master in this age. A war master would fail us. We need a daddy, custodes showing their appreciation to Captain General Kit in this alternate universe setting. Brythema 40k comes with the tagline in the noble brightness of the far future. There is only high adventure this is as opposed to the original tagline of Warhammer 40k, which stated, in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. Brythammer 40k setting has strong 1920s 1940s pulp fiction themes crossed with an age of myth bronze age culture. Differences between Warhammer 40k and Brythammer 40k include, the setting is loosely divided into city states united by race religion, philosophy or just simple common sense, rather than singular empires defined by paranoia. There is a wider variety in the type of characters, nations, flora and fauna, and major characters in the setting. Speaking of wide varieties of characters nations, relations between different groups, whether cultural, political, racial, etc. are usually positive. Conflicts are either out of just cause or have the option of being resolved peacefully. Unlike Grimdark, in which conflict's resolution is usually genocide, there is an overall pulp fiction feel. Just like real life, the universe is old, in the process of rediscovering a forgotten golden age. Low-level conflicts such as raiding are considered common. But war is not. Just like Mongolia. When a Noblebright universe has a war, it's usually for a well-defined, just cause. Wars are usually fought with smart technology, and massive, endless slaughters are rare. Grimdark usually devolves technology in some form, then throws in massive slaughters for the fun of it. Technology is wildly inconsistent. Just like Alaska. Villains are over the top. Campy and rarely played seriously. Very much like North Korea. Leaders are usually diplomats or wise philosopher kings like in North Korea. Heroes do most of the heavy lifting in society, and there are heroes, great and minor, at every level of society. There is a strong emphasis on individual strength. Grimdark focuses on the massed collective. Individual strength is insignificant in the enormous Grimdarkian machine. Good guys can be jerks but are still good guys. Over the top heroism usually carries the day. Obvious, thinly disguised secret agents everywhere. The setting is entering a technological renaissance. Everything is bright or vividly colored. As seen on TV compared to Warhammer 40k. Brythammer 40k is generally brighter and a nicer place to live, but is by no means peaceful, always in a low level state of conflict, internal and external never quite turning into war. The skull motif is replaced by wings, and colors are often brighter. Midhammer 40,000 strikes a balance between nobly bright and grimdark. Basically, you don't matter much, but if mankind can put their back into it hard enough, it'll turn out okay in the end. Biggie is alive, 
and regenerating. Primark still exists there is hope for a better future. Even if you don't live to see it, your children may well. While the Admet got buttfucked twice, it's slowly getting it back together. And lo, behold, Canon 40k 9th edition has actually moved into this direction, with Biggie actually coming back, Gilliman working to fix the Imperium, and Call developing technologies to reverse the damage done by Chaos and the Tyranids. TL. DR of the Spectrum. Noble Grim equals whether the future prospects of the setting look positive negative, and more importantly whether anybody can accomplish anything significant for good or evil without arbitrary cosmic forces making all their struggles ultimately meaningless. Hope versus despair. Bright dark equals determines the current state of things. Is it generally a good place to live or a bad one more specifically? How cynical and low trust, if at all, are the characters in the setting behaving in response to the negative aspects of their world? Solidarity versus dysfunction. 8 Chan explanation of the Grim Noble and Dark Bright Spectrum by Annans. Grim Noble asks whether there are heroes that exist, may appear to change the world for good or ill. A noble setting isn't one where everyone is good, more like one where people are active and, more importantly, Impactful in the grand scheme. The actions of a single hero can change the world, and a single big villain can ruin it. There are important people who are so either by birth, rank or sheer willpower, and every single one of these people matter. In a grim world, no matter what you do, an individual can't secure more than an individual victory, if even that, because the rest of the world is too big scared powerless selfish to build upon his impulses and influence. Something like Morrowind or Berserk is noble, bright and dark, respectively, because it is about one man forcing destiny's hand and changing the world. So I hear you guys are into thick big titty wafers. Well we got you covered at nickbedlier.co.uk. One stop shop for Kumja models. However we do sell a lot more than just smart models we got everything for running any fantasy settings and even some not grim dark science fiction models. In fact we even have some anime inspired models and video game. But if models is not your thing we also have some role playing adventures and DND 5e meme subclasses. Also every video we will be giving away all our homebrew content to a subscriber of the channel. All you got to do to be in with a chance is subscribe. Today's winner is this guy. Well done. Claim your prize by contacting us via email at nickbedeacontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video. Now, a bright world is one full of opportunity, of wondrous sights to behold. It doesn't mean that it has to be MLP. It can be dangerous, but your first instinct when looking at a new location should be awe and wonder. People may adventure to save the world, but they leave town with a smile upon their face, eager to see what comes next. The shadow of risk is squarely matched by the gleam of possibility. In a bright world, it's quite possible for people to go on adventure just for the hell of it, since the journey is its own reward. Resurrection, or at least means to heal grave injuries, is usually accessible. To counterbalance the fact that the risks out there are real. A dark world is one where life sucks, and on top of the usual hazards, something or someone is poised to kill everybody else in the story, whether it be demon overlords, nids, or even the lack of water. If this threat has its way everyone dies and they die for good. If you lose an arm, you play a cripple. In the extreme cases, even when you win a fight, your career is over. That is gangrene. This means that, even though people may be ready to help, noble, they'll need a damn good reason to do so. Since stepping out of line is so dangerous, Dark given is an example of each type of setting to show how the combinations of noble grim and bright dark work. 40k is grim, dark because, no matter where you go, there is only war, and heroism's only reward is usually a notch on a gun or a corpse in a trench. No matter who you are, most of the galaxy probably wants you dead, and staying home today is the best choice you can make. Even if you make it to the end. You may have to sacrifice everything to save everyone, if you haven't already done so. Berserk is noble, dark because, while there seems to be light at the end of the tunnel, 
It takes men and women of insane willpower to get there. No matter whether you are big or small, even when you have nothing, the only thing that may save the world is a will within you screaming. Go on and if hope was to fail, you're getting a book long bloodbath orgy and all its consequences. Moro Wind is noble, bright because, even though the world is fraught with dangers, you can fix everything. The reason it isn't dark is because there is so much to see, so many interesting people to meet, so many cool things to experience that, at the end of the road, you'd do it all over again if given the chance to see it once again with virgin eyes. Sandman is grim, bright because the incredible vistas and interesting people are all that can distract Dream from the dullness of his existence. He will tire of them all, but even he has to admit that he saw some cool shit. Also, notice how the relative freedom from consequences, people can get somewhat rezzed healed characters don't die much. A bright ray reinforces the futility of the struggle in a grim world. In short, grim dark and nobler bright worlds both exist, and both are interesting to play in. So do grim bright. Perhaps these are the most narratively counterintuitive and hardest to pull off, but simultaneously they can be the most interesting worlds to run in. As the Sandman example shows, these settings work best as backgrounds for contemplative psychedelic journeys through the ennui of what might be called comfortable nihilists, and Nobler Dark seems to be enjoying a big surge in popularity these days. People like the aesthetics and adult nature of dark worlds, but not the crushing nihilism. In Nobler Dark, most things suck. Those rare moments of genuine nobility and decent change are all the more poignant even if they come at great cost. Every type allows for evil and struggles to exist, and for stories to be told. Nobler Bright is not, usually, utopian or down to shiny. Pleasant aesthetics, after all Adventure Time looks textbook Nobler Bright but is actually super coated grimdark, and evil can even triumph. It's less of a matter of who wins, and more of a matter of tone. In a bright world, the beg can win, but he won't skullfuck to death everyone a PCS no in front of a crowd without the mood turning to dark. Some examples of each, Grimdark, Warhammer, both kinds, Warhammer 40,000 coined the term Grimdark from its tagline, so goes without saying. A song of ice and fire Game of Thrones Eda per CYE Divine Sibram and Sea Gears of War. Basically a world in which humanity has been at war with itself and genocidal mutants for over a century. The world is apocalyptic and everyone uses chainsaw bayonets to saw their enemies in half. Killzone 2-3 If Space World War 2 met Gears of War. Killzone is the product, a genocidal war between humanity and a mutated version of them on a wasteland planet. Both sides commit war crimes incessantly. The Machina Games Wolfenstein series. It's 1960, Jim, but not as we know it. The Nazis used crazy super technology to win World War II and grind the free world into dust by 1947. The games pull no punches in its depictions of the Nazis' ideology in the kind of waking nightmare they would turn the world into if they were free to reshape it as they saw fit. Dark Souls Conan the Barbarian takes place in a fictional time period after the sinking of Atlantis but before their historical record began. There are monsters and villains everywhere, all magic is black, and the few cities are run by maniacal sorcerers and other unsavory types. Conan usually only barely survives his story through it and dumb luck rather than might, and he certainly cannot change the world, not at least until he becomes the good king of Aquilonia. Dark Sun Ravenloft Delta Green, Earth and mankind exist in a tiny flickering firelight of sanity and civilization that can and inevitably will be snuffed out by alien gods and forces of madness. You play as the clandestine agents of the US government tasked to investigate and combat this phenomena. Few people in Delta Green live to retire, and the most common retirement plan usually involves a bottle of whiskey in their service pistol. Dwarf Fortress Undertale, Genocide Route, 1984 I have no mouth and I must scream Zeely sequence. All three are strong contenders for the most grimdark story ever put to paper. Experts are currently divided. The first takes place in a possibly post-apocalyptic earth split between three totalitarian superpowers that are constantly at war despite sharing the same nihilistic ideology with an affiliated nation serving as the battlegrounds prizes. 
and the hero is an ordinary man who gets captured, tortured and thoroughly minfucked by the police into accepting the rule of the party. The second takes place in a post-apocalyptic underground city where a psychotic supercomputer tortures the last five living people while keeping them alive and from killing each other. The protagonist wins by mercy killing the other four but his moral victory is tempered by the fact he is trapped forever at the mercy of the machine. The third takes place in a nightmare hellscape where the entire universe is dying between a cosmic war of two godlike races. Whilst the human race has degenerated to such levels of bastardry that the actions of strip mining entire galactic superclusters or committing a zenotidal killing spree across the universe that stretched for millions of years is a mere dip in the ocean. There is no hope or salvation. Heroism is not only dead but outright outlawed. Absolute surveillance and total control due to mass time travel usage as an incalculable amount of human child soldiers would die for nothing. Meanwhile the surviving races are fighting tooth and nail, killing each other as they are trying to escape a reality that is collapsing in on itself. Grimbright, Sandman The Sims, pretty self-explanatory. The world is generally nice to live in and stories are more about your sims living one day at a time than anything else. Most tycoon games the commonwealth saga eclipse phase the culture. Futuristic novel series by Ian M. Banks, set in a utopian society based on socialist and anarchist principles achieved by post-scarcity technology, space hippies whose words are backed by star system busters. This lot are probably the only fictional sci-fi civilization that would beat the Imperium hands down in a war. The protagonists are usually special circumstances, agents of the closest thing they have to an intelligence division given license to operate outside of their laws and morals to uphold a culture way of life. Delta Rune Scarred Land Spell Jima Yokohama Kadoshi Kikau. A soft sea fee slice of life manga from the turn of the millennium. The story follows Alpha Hat Sosino, a genoid that claims ownership of a cafe in the titular Yokohama shopping district after a devastating flood. As refugees and vagabonds trickle in and out of her turf, the reader discovers the flood was merely the last in a series of global calamities. Chief among them was the sterilization of the entire human race. All surviving humans have completely made peace with the destruction of civilization and their imminent extinction, and have resolved to spend their remaining time living idyllic pioneer lifestyles. So resigned is the human race that the focus of the story isn't even the on the implications of the demise of the species or the fate of the fallow earth but on the side characters helping Alpha to recognize her own blooming humanity as she decides with her fellow robot buddies to become a living record of the humans she encountered in their final days, the age of the calm evening when the whole world, which had been like a festival, slowly calmed down, Rabbi, the result of Sailor Moon and Bloodborne having a drunk fling. It subsists on a steady diet of rule of cool. You take four cute teenage heroines and watch as the grim, behind the scenes reality of their glamorous high adventure world beams them over the head repeatedly because they are just rookies who don't matter much in the grand scheme of things. Then they come back with a vengeance and it becomes pure nobler bright instead. Doctor Who. It's a time travel show where the protagonist is a millennia old alien who has seen and done some truly incredible shit in his time but cannot overtly alter the flow of history or even build close relations with his human companions. He just saves the day and goes off to another planet. Most of Zeus flings with mortals from the god's perspective. Tao Hao. Despite Jin Sokai being a fantastical setting and the characters all being quirky cute girls, ultimately the majority of folk are powerless to change the status quo and everyone is kind of stuck in a system that forces humans and Yao Kei to be at odds. The relationship between the two is slowly growing more peaceful, but it's unlikely true harmonious coexistence could ever be achieved. Mirror's Edge. In the end, you can take home a few personal victories, but you can't change the wider status quo. The oppressive government still controls the city of glasses flow of information. The anti-courier assassin program is still going strong. 
and security is only getting tighter with each passing day. But at least you've saved your sister from being unjustly convicted for murder and got your revenge on the bastards who tried to frame her. The city itself is also quite cool to look at, and there's a sense of constant adventure in the form of courier jobs passing information the government doesn't want people to know from runner to runner. Classical bright trays. Dark, the Lord of the Rings. If Warhammer is the platonic ideal of Grimdark, Lotter is the platonic ideal of Dark. Mass Effect, galactic civilization is not a united front. Humanity is the upstart new kid on the block and looming over all other reapers bringing Lovecraftian levels of Grimdark. But while it takes a monumental effort heroes can save, or ruin, everything. Berserker Baron Starcraft Neon Genesis 7 Julian Terminator No Fate But What We Make Versus A Genocidal Global Army Of Machines. Fallout. The world may be a nuked out hellhole full of monsters, cannibals, bandits, and power hungry psychopaths. But even one person can make grand, sweeping changes with enough fortune, skill, and grit. Especially New Vegas. Oh boy, New Vegas. The independence ending is basically the story of how a wasteland courier dug their way out of their own grave and brought down two post-apocalyptic superpowers through sheer force of will and character. The Iliad Skyrim Undertale. Mercy Root. Firefly. Humanity is settled in star systems caught between an authoritarian interstellar alliance. Interplanetary crime syndicates and space pirates who are pretty much dark elder with alien advancement swapped for cannibalism and radiation sickness. But the motley crew of one outdated freighter ship dance between the raindrops and strike blows against these three that actually improve life for humanity. Most Batman stories, yes, Gotham sucks and yes, Batman is a dark character, but he is also a deeply idealistic hero refuses to kill, believes in the inherent good of people and the human spirit. Which is why putting Batman in grim dark tends to really not work. Warhammer novels like Salfus Kane and Gaunt's Ghosts, especially ones where the protagonists are ordinary people like the Imperial Guard rather than the superhuman, galaxy bestriding space marines. Exalted, encapsulates the nobler dark spirit for RPGs. The world sucks. You have the power to fix it. Try not not to fuck it up worse, Naoki Eurosaur's Monster, a psychological thriller manga about a neurosurgeon setting out to stop a former patient of his who turns out to have become a serial killer, committing murders in the surgeon's name. Said serial killer might also be the next Hitler, or even the Antichrist, we're not sure. Despite that, the surgeon is a genuinely good person. And most of the series is about how a good person can make a difference despite the corrupt world around them. Nobly bright. The Chronicles of Narnia Moro I'm Forgotten Realms Greyhawk Magi Warcraft Star Wars Pokemon Trine most Marvel movies. Except the one that is really infamous for not being this the Odyssey and of course Star Trek. The platonic ideal of Nobler Bright.